Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass, and today we've got an underwater video for you. Today we are heading below the surface to compare poop baits. I kid you not, whether you call these poop baits, whether you call them gravity baits, heavy baits, there's a variety of names, but this style of bait is sweeping bass fishing. And today we're going to go below the surface and compare all the different versions. If you're not familiar with this category of bait, it sounds a little crazy at first. And frankly, it is. Now there are a couple of baits that have really popularized the category. The first is the Depths Cover Scat. Scat, as in poop. Another one, the Yamamoto Yamatanuki. Huge success over the past year since that bait arrived in the US. Now, why do they call them poop baits? We looked at the Cover Scat. Here's another one. The Fish Arrow. What do they call that? Heavy poop. I kid you not, we're not making this stuff up. This category of baits are, how do I describe these baits? They're very small and they're very, very heavy. Thus the other names, heavy baits, gravity baits. Think weedless and weightless, but much faster falling than say a Senko as a category. These are baits that get down quickly, even though they're weightless and they hold bottom and you can fish them very aggressively. Now, at ICAST this year, there were quite a few new additions to the category and some of those took some heat. Uh, and that's why today we're headed underwater because I wanted to look at every single one of the baits that I'm aware of in the category and just see where they stand. And frankly, I was blown away. Look at these baits side by side. These are the seven baits that I'm aware of in the category. And when I actually got all of them and laid them out together, none of these are a rip off of another bait. None of them. They are all in the same category. It's obvious that some inspired others uh, but each one is unique in its own right. And as we head below the surface, you're going to be shocked to see just how different all of these baits are. In my opinion, they actually fall into three very distinct categories. Now, before we head underwater, let me explain uh, what we did to make this as consistent as possible. Every single bait is thrown on this same hook. So all the footage you see is on a Gamakatsu Superline 4 aught hook. They're all on the same one. And I did my best. Some of these baits only come in one size, some come in multiple sizes. I did my best to keep them all as close to three and a half inches as possible. So we got the most consistent comparison between the baits. Now, the actual footage, you're going to see three clips of each bait. You're going to see uh, a standard clip of that bait falling and then being worked a little bit. You'll notice that we tend to work these baits pretty aggressively. It's not necessarily about the fall. Sometimes it's about what they do when you pop them back up. We'll get to that at the end of the video. But the first clip is the bait falling and being worked. Second clip is slow motion of the fall. And then the third clip is working that bait uh, more gently, kind of finessing it along the bottom to see what it does. So three clips of each bait. When we get done with that, I'll give you some of my takeaways, some of the things I observed and the categories that I put these baits into.
Did you guys notice any significant differences between those baits? Some baits had sort of a unique rocking motion on the fall. Some dropped really quickly. Uh, some would dart more when you popped them off the bottom. Some would go straight. Uh, distinct differences between the baits. Personally, I saw a lot of things and I'm gonna break those down for you here so you can understand a little bit more about this category. Now, the category as a whole, uh, fishing these baits is very, very simple. There's a reason we had it on that four-aught super line hook. I tend to fish this on medium heavy tackle uh, in a lot of the places that I used to fish a Senko. Obviously, I still fish a Senko, but this will fish in a lot of those same places, in and around cover, um, you know, skipping under docks or laid down trees or throwing on a grass line. But what I discovered through this underwater footage was some of the deep water advantages here as well, which is a whole different animal. So let's break these baits into three different categories. Then we'll talk more about how we fish them. But here's what I observed in the footage. First off, I would say that the poop category of baits is probably the biggest success story for our industry uh, of how to see innovation in a category done properly. I was amazed when I actually lined the baits up in person, how distinctly unique each one of these baits is. They're obviously in the same category. This heavy bait category works. Fish are getting caught. Obviously, brands are going to want into that category. But what I see here is that it was done properly. Each brand brought a unique shape, a unique fall, a unique action, uh, something different to the category. And I applaud that for all of these brands. Uh, I think that is great for the bass fishing industry because we need to move forward into categories. We need options, uh, but innovation is critical. We need to see something that is advancing fishing, helping us catch more fish, giving us distinct options to do different things. And here it is. Here's what I noticed. The first thing is that we've got three categories of baits now. We've got what we'll call the standard poop baits. I mean, I don't know what to call them. The, the typical baits, they're right in the middle. Then we've got what I'm gonna call shallow water baits and deep water baits. Let's start with the shallow. There were two very distinct standouts. The Missile Baits Bomba and the Nori's Flip Dom. Both of these baits fall much, much slower than all of the others. So, as a result, you tend to have more of that rolling side to side, back and forth type action on the fall. This is almost a crossover between this new poop category uh, and like the Senko or the stick bait category. Uh, and I think that is really interesting because it's great to have baits that are sort of in that crossover. If I'm fishing in maybe less than five or six foot, it's definitely going to be one of these two going forward. I learned a lot watching this underwater footage, just like I'm sure you did. Also, if I got away from the super line hook, if I went to a standard wire, uh, I might even go down to a three aught instead of a four aught. I think we're going to see that action amplified even more. So these baits are much slower fall rate than the other baits in the category, uh, but they still had a really good action when you popped them and worked them up off of the bottom. Uh, because a lot of this, again, is not about the fall. Although for these baits it is because they fall very slowly. Once they're on bottom, I really like to snap these poop baits or heavy baits up off the bottom and get that movement out of them. A lot of times for me, my bites come right then. I snap them up off the bottom and boom, there's the bite. The fish have seen them come down, they go over and they look at them. And when the baits pop up, they jump out and eat them. It's a pure reaction strike out of an otherwise slow moving bait in the soft bait category. It's very, very interesting. But those two, are definitely the clear winners for slower falling baits. Now, at the complete other end of the spectrum, we've got deep water baits or fast falling baits. And two of these baits were serious standouts. This is the Spro Craw Nugget 
And then this is the Fish Arrow Heavy Poop. Both of these fell much, much faster than everything else in the category. I mean, way faster. If we had shot this underwater footage in 20 feet of water, these things would have hit bottom way before the rest of the baits. Both of these are really interesting. Um, I noticed some distinct differences between them. I noticed that on the Spro, see how it's got this little bit of a tail fin? It's like a true craw profile, but no claws. Like the claws out here on the front just got ripped off of this crawdad versus the fish arrow, full body with claws. I don't know if you could see that, but there's like scale details, eyeballs, and two claws pointed out in the front. Um, this bait tends to just head for bottom at a quick rate of fall, just sort of heads to bottom. This one, not all of the time, but sometimes the spro would go into sort of a death spiral, a spiral to the bottom. And I think that would be amazing in deep water situations because Tim and I have done some serious damage with baits that will do that death spiral in open clear water situations or around docks even. Uh, but it was interesting as an added bonus that that bait didn't always have that steady fall to bottom or just a straight sink to bottom. Uh, sometimes it would break out into a glide and I credit that to that little crawdad detail there on the tail. But both of these baits um, sink like a rock compared to the rest. So I would say if you're fishing consistently uh, deeper than say 10 to 15 foot, if you really wanna fish some deep water with this bait, I mean, these were heavy enough that I think Tennessee River ledge fishing on a day where there's not so much current, I could fish these effectively in 20 to 25 foot, even with some current. Uh, they really got down quickly. And then once they're down, they wanna stay down. Uh, when you go to give them those subtle movements, they don't have a whole lot going on because they're so heavy that they just sort of stand up and get dragged. But if you snap them up, they still pop up really aggressively and come back down really aggressively for that reaction strike. But definitely two distinct baits, very different from one another, that both fish very effectively in deeper water situations. And then that brings us to what we're going to call the, the middle of the road, for lack of a better term. Two of the most popular baits in this entire category are right here. You've got the Depths Cover Scat. You've got the Yamamoto Yamatanuki. Both, I mean, beyond popular. Now this one just entered the category. This is the Rain's Tank Worm. But all three of these sort of fall into that middle fall rate where they've got a great fall to the bottom and then once they're on bottom you pop them up and they still get really good darting action you can almost like if you pop 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 you kind of walk the dog off up off the bottom with them um, really unique bait so these three are in the middle and here i would say if you're fishing consistently five to 15 feet of water one of these is your bait and from there you just, you know, you've seen the underwater footage. In each one of these categories, you can pick your own favorite. I don't know that I have a favorite out of those three categories. Um, all of these are distinctly different. Now, the Cover Scat and the Yama Tanuki, I have a lot of history with. I've caught a pile of fish on both of these, but they've been on the market longer. I've just started catching fish on that tank worm because it's brand new. But again, all of these categories distinctly different with distinctly different baits in them. And I think each one of these baits, now that we understand the conditions and the situation to throw each one, every single one of these seven baits is absolutely going to shine at different times. I think I could take that tank worm right now, go shoot it up under docks and I'm gonna blast some fish with that thing. I think I could pull out to a ledge, throw that spro, throw that heavy poop and get a fish to bite that has seen baits on that offshore structure all summer long, right? They've seen a thousand swim baits, a thousand crank baits. They have not seen that bait 20 feet deep this entire summer. And then we've got a lot of places that still have grass on the Tennessee River. See a lot of places, grass is dying back for the fall, but in the deep south, 
and all the way up to where we are, there's still a lot of healthy grass. And you know a bait like the Bomba or the Flip Dom, even if people are throwing poop style baits, they haven't been throwing baits with that slow fall rate on the edges of those grass. And you can pluck off fish that have been seeing baits all summer, but they have not seen these profiles. Again, I want to applaud this entire category uh, because again, at ICAST, some of these baits took heat uh, before entering the category. And I don't think there's anything wrong with entering a category as long as you bring innovation, as long as you bring something different and it advances fishing for the angler. And I think this is a shining example of how seven different companies can be in the exact same category with seven distinctly different baits that as it turns out, play in three very different situations. Uh, and all of them, in my eyes, all of them are winners. And that just doesn't happen. And I think that is really cool. I have caught a pile of fish on these poop baits over the last couple of years. For me, it started with the cover scat. Caught a pile of them on the cover scat. Then when the Yama Tanuki came out, caught a pile of them on that. I bought that Nori's Flip Dom next then the heavy poop, then the other three came to market. Um, I love the category and I think it's going to continue to explode. One thing I will say is that when I watch the underwater footage, they don't have like the beauty of a creature bait going to bottom or the flow of a drop shot worm. If I had never caught a fish on a poop bait and I watched underwater video of one of them like kind of doing its thing to bottom, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's for me but there's a reason everybody's entering this category. These baits work, they catch fish. And if you haven't tried it, it is worth giving it a try. Now I said in the beginning, I use a very specific rod for this. I use a medium heavy poison Adrena. I want a lot of sensitivity when I fish these baits because for me, I throw them out and I kind of slack them to let them fall to get as much action out of them as I can because they don't have tons of action on the fall. Then I snap them up, and when I snap them up, a lot of my bites happen right there on the slack. So sensitivity is really important to me to feel it through the slack line. I fish them on braid to leader, uh, and I want that poison adrenaline, I want that extra sensitivity. But you can do this with any medium heavy rod. So I'll link you the exact rod that I throw. Um, I'll also link you a great budget option for fishing this bait. Fishing them is not complicated. You can throw them everywhere. You throw a jig, a shaky head, a Senko. Uh, it's just a new category of baits. It's a different look that bass are willing to eat simply because they haven't seen it. It's a little bit different. It's a growing category. There are a lot of people starting to throw them, but nothing compared to shaky heads or stick baits or something like that. The poop baits, as odd as that category is, are here to stay. Hopefully this underwater footage helped you understand the differences between them. Maybe you saw one that fits your style of fishing and we were able to save you a bunch of money. You don't have to buy them all. You can buy the one that fits your style, right? You're a shallow water guy. It's that one or that one. Which one looked better to you? You're a deep water guy. It's one of those two, right? We really wanted to break it down so you could see the differences without having to do this, without having to buy them all and throw them in clear water and get a feel for them. If it helped you, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.